Hello, welcome back to Weeknight Mysteries. This time we want to talk about the mysterious disappearance case of a man named Jason Jelkovsky or Yelkovsky. I'm joined with my co-host, Rain. How are you today? Hello, everyone. As always, I'm feeling completely okay today. It's been a while since we last posted, right? I was going to actually mention that fact. Yeah, we had a very tight schedule. We had like other things happening as we uh, were kind of moving through the last couple of weeks. We didn't, uh, we didn't manage to upload anything, unfortunately, mm-hmm. but we were always waiting for that one kind of deadline to finally pass. It's my thesis. Yeah. I still had to write it. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, now, and now that's kind of in the bag, at least for the foreseeable future, and we can create more content. So Jason's case, we have talked about it um, previously, like between each other, and we've watched the documentary, but you probably forgot most of the details, right? Oh yeah, I can't even remember what happened. Like anything, any information at all, couldn't remember anything. No, that's good because I have my notes here. So I generally remember the case and I want to walk you through it. And um, I think we were already leaning towards a certain uh, potential very dark scenario mm-hmm. in this case. Like this case gives me the chills. And I think you will know why soon. Let's, let me introduce the case. Jason Jelkovsky disappeared on June 13th in 2001. So this happened like 23 years ago on a Wednesday in Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha is the biggest city in Nebraska. It's pretty big. It's like has a half a million people living there. So it's a pretty big city in Nebraska. Now, Jason disappeared as he was heading to Benson High School to meet a colleague who would give him a ride to work at an Italian fast food restaurant called Fazoli's. It's uh, apparently a fast food chain in the United States that serve like Italian type fast foods. He left his home and vanished somewhere between the eight blocks that he would have to cover in order to get to that high school, Benson High School. At the time of his disappearance, he was 19 years of age, and he was described as a white male with brown hair and brown eyes. He stands at around 6 foot 1 and weighs approximately 160 pounds. So I would say he's like on a taller side. Mm-hmm. He's 6 foot 1. He's on the taller side for sure. Jason was wearing a white Chicago Cubs or Sammy Sosa t-shirt. Sammy Sosa is a famous Chicago Cubs baseball player. He was a big fan of that baseball club, Chicago Cubs. He was also potentially wearing a blue or black Chicago Cubs baseball cap as well, alongside black dress pants and black dress shoes. And that's all we know. Now, th- giving this description, does this like, I don't know, like make your brain work a little bit here? And do you remember anything or is it still pretty blank? Yeah, I actually remember everything now. But for the sake of the audience, I'm ju- it's going to keep my mouth shut for a while. No, you could, you could uh, <laughs> interrupt me at any point. So let's talk a little bit about the background because um, I have some information here. Jason, who was 19, he was... Also a, what I understand, a part-time student. He was born on June 24th in 81 to Kelly Murphy, that's his mom, and his father, Jim Jelkovsky, in Grand Island, Nebraska, another town in Nebraska. Jason was known to have had a learning disability related to speech and language. It sometimes took him longer than others to process what someone was trying to say. The disabilities may make him appear to be be mildly mentally disabled, but he was actually reportedly of above average intelligence. What do you think this 
learning disability was. It's described that Jason sometimes took longer than others to process what someone was trying to tell him. So for example, if you're trying to tell him something, like maybe, did you, I don't know, did, did, can you check if we have milk in the fridge? Apparently, or maybe like more complex, mm -hmm. more complex things maybe than that. I don't know. But apparently that's what we are working with here. A man who apparently is slower to understand, but in deep, deep down, he's more intelligent than an average person. And I think his intelligence was shown in his reportedly amazing memory when it comes to sports questions. Mm -hmm. Like, he knows a lot about who won the World Series, which is like the Super Bowl of baseball. Yeah at like a certain year and who was the MVP and things of that nature. So apparently he has a really good memory. So his brain is like working at a very high capacity, but it's something's like not matching up completely. But I don't know. We're just. Yeah, I don't think it's very obvious, though. I think he's just, for example, yeah, you're talking to him. There must there must have been a delay or some sort for like a second or a couple of seconds. But it doesn't seem to be that obvious. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think I think someone else like uh, mentioned something on Reddit. I think I found a comment where someone who actually knew him mm -hmm. commented on Reddit, and I think they kind of had something similar to say that it wasn't that noticeable. It's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Jason's mother Kelly explained that Jason was shy and quiet and kept to a small group of friends. He was not involved in drugs or alcohol and was very close to his family. He also had strong religious beliefs. So by age 19, Jason already was at six foot one. He probably wasn't even done growing at that point. So who knows how tall he would have been or maybe is if he's still alive. Mm -hmm. After graduating from Benson High School, yes, this is that same high school that he was walking towards on the day when he vanished, Jason worked part-time at a local Italian fast food restaurant named Fazoli's. As he was also attending Iowa Western Community College, from what I understand, he was financing his own studies. That's, That's he, amazing. Yeah, he was doing a good job there. Although Jason had a speech and comprehension impairment, allegedly, he decided to major in radio broadcasting at Iowa Western Community College, where he was studying part-time. While attending college, Jason started hosting the college radio station. According to Jason's mother, Jason quickly grew a following and his radio personality has developed. When Jason would be on air, he would become a completely different person. He would become more confident so he could tap into that alter ego and become like a very confident guy on radio. It seemed like he really liked that. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that he couldn't continue because of foul play. I don't know. Let's 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 talk about it. While Attending college, oh, sorry, I'm reading the same line, sorry, sorry, sorry. Jason was looking forward to late June 2001 when he would start his new job at a local radio station. However, Jason went missing on June 13th and has not been seen since. So he, on the same month when he vanished, later on that month, he was set to start a job in a real radio station. That's probably his dream job. Mm -hmm. So shows to me that there is probably no reason why he would want to voluntarily disappear. Exactly. The only conclusion I'm drawn towards is foul play mm -hmm. at this point. Jason would be around, well, he would be like 43, I believe now. And we do have his aged, progressed images if he is still alive 
I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put this up on the YouTube channel as well for everyone to see. Maybe you have seen Jason, who knows? And this is the, the general story. I would like to jump into the details surrounding his disappearance. Mm -hmm. There's some pretty weird things that are happening there. I want to kind of talk about it. So let's jump to the morning of June 13th, which is a Wednesday in the middle of the week. This is the day when he went, mad, uh, when he went missing. So Jason... In the morning on Wednesday, got a call from his boss at Fazoli's, that it Italian restaurant. Now, this is the restaurant that is located in Omaha, uh, where he's, you know, living. And this boss asked Jason to come in early for work on that Wednesday. Now, Jason had already planned to go to work that day. But in the afternoon shift at 5.30 p.m. that evening. So if I understand, he would have to work literally like two shifts at this point. He goes in in the morning and he like works all throughout the day. I don't know what, what's the setup, but looks like he was potentially going to have to be in Fazoli's all day long. Now, it's immediately important for me because I'm thinking, did he have plans already? You know what I mean? It doesn't and seem like it. Why? Because, I mean, he accepted the shift. But didn't... He was hesitant. Oh. Allegedly, he was hesitant and paused for a moment. This is like literally what we have on the case. He literally hesitated, but eventually agreed. He was hesitant at first because his car was currently in need of repairs and he would have to walk for over an hour to get to Fazoli's restaurant. Now for that afternoon shift, he already knew that his father would be able to take him. But in the morning, his father is probably doing his, his job, you know what I mean? He's like mm -hmm. 9 to 5, so he can't really take him in the morning. So Jason eventually agrees to go to work. Um... Now, Jason was eager to pick up extra hours, allegedly, at work because he was saving up and uh, he was going to finance his studies. So Jason was able to contact a co-worker for a ride. So another person, a woman who worked at that Fazoli's, agreed to give Jason a lift to, you know, Fazoli's, so they could go to work. This was a bit strange because it was reported that Jason was bad at providing directions. So both of them decided to meet at Benson High School, from which both of them had graduated, you know? So they mm -hmm. both went to the same high school, so they knew where to meet up. And Jason was living pretty close. It's like only like 15 minutes of walking. Yeah. So Benson High School is only eight blocks away from the Jalkovsky residence where Jason was living. The route from his home to his high school was very familiar to Jason. He allegedly made that walk many times during his high school days. Jason had made countless walks uh, growing up. And the residents who lived in the houses that lined the street that he would walk more than likely knew him too. So everyone who was living there, like on that route, probably also knew who Jason was because he was the, the kid who was making the trip to high school, to school every day for years. So, you know, they remember who Jason was. Jason had agreed to meet this female co-worker at 11 a.m. in the morning. And knowing that the walk to Benson High School would take him roughly 15 minutes, he spent some time finishing up some chores at home because it was too early for him to leave. Jason's younger brother, 13-year-old Michael, and the fellow neighbor recall watching Jason retrieve a garbage can from the curb of the street and return the can to the garage before departing 
with his red Fazoli's t-shirt in his hand to meet his female co-worker that was gonna give him a ride to, to work. Is this currently like understandable? Oh yeah, but it seems to me like it was a pretty regular day. Nothing out of the, out of the ordinary whatsoever. Yeah, some people immediately cast some suspicion towards this neighbor. Think about it. Mm -hmm. This guy or woman. Yeah. But I'm thinking it's most likely a guy. For some reason, I just have an inclination that this neighbor was probably a, a guy. But it could have been a woman. But I don't know. It was the last person who's not a family member who saw them. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't there be any suspicion casted on this person? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, because it does seem like Jason disappeared in the neighborhood and this person just saw them last. Coincidentally, I wonder right? if law enforcement ever considered that person as a person of interest. Potentially they did. I mean, why would they not do it? So by the time 11.15 rolled around, his co-worker grew impatient because it was already 15 minutes past the meetup time. And when it hit 11.30 a.m., Jason was officially late for like 30 minutes. Jason's female co-worker exited her vehicle and walked towards a nearby phone. Because this is 2001, so mm -hmm. they don't have cell phones. Yet, she found an available line at a nearby gas station and called the Jalkovsky residence. Firstly, Jason's younger brother, Michael, the 13-year-old brother, answered the phone and he was actually pretending to be Jason. But when he noticed that his female um, co-worker was panicking, he quickly dropped the act and so soon became just as concerned. Now, let me get a little water break. Okay, I'm back from the water break. So... Let's continue on what we have here in the story, right? So, after her conversation with Michael, the younger brother, Jason's female co-worker called her boss at Fazoli's, and the boss called her back to work. So, Jason Jalkowski has not been seen since. He didn't go to work that day. Jason's family would report him missing 24 hours later, abiding by the common waiting period set up at the time. Police failed to open a formal investigation until 10 days after Jason's disappearance, initially believing that he was a potential runaway. During the formal investigation, police interviewed Jason's female co-worker, clearing her of any involvement in his disappearance. Police reviewed footage from security cameras at Benson High School campus and it was discovered that Jason had never reached the high school. So he never went there. Something happened on the way to high school, seemingly. Um, now, if you're wondering like what the route looks like, it's a very, I would say, gives me a very suburban feel like this nebraska omaha suburban feel um in general the surrounding area is not the nicest but it's also not the worst i think it's it's called northern uh, sorry northern omaha like the general neighborhood and allegedly it's known not to be the best neighborhood but quick question omaha. yeah are there any forests or rivers nearby? Not necessarily. You know, it seems like it's in the middle of this huge, 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 like, plot of land with, like, a lot of individual homes. Mm -hmm. And thus, to me, seem like he probably something happened within that general, like, neighborhood of, of like, homes. So there was no way, since there are no rivers nearby, obviously, that he was in there somewhere or uh, within a forest or something yeah i would say it's it's probably not the case mm -hmm. i would say it's probably not the case not not in this case so jason made sure to complete his daily chores on the day when he went missing he didn't take any of his personal belongings with him and it is believed that he carried no more than 60 dollars on him his cell phone, because he did have a cell phone, 
or ATM card has never been used and his final paychecks from Fazoli's remained uncashed. Jason left behind $650 in his bank account that still remains today. Jason's family believes that he was more than likely met with foul play. They believe that it is highly likely he was abducted and killed. In the area where Jason disappeared, there were multiple sex offenders, and detectives made it a point to interview almost all of them. They even went as far as searching one of their homes for any signs of Jason. After multiple interviews and the single search invest inve single search investigators and sorry, investigators found no evidence that suggested or linked any involvement in Jason's disappearance. So they, I guess, couldn't connect the sex offenders to Jason's case. And Jason has not been seen for 23 years now. It's been 2001 since he was missing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was, I was in first grade when he went missing. So it's been a while. Yeah. You know, it's been a long time and seems like Jason was someone who's probably would have been like a radio guy, you know? By the pretty, looks of it, yeah. Yeah. Or I like mean, uh, the commentator in sports thingy. I'm not sure what they're yeah, called. Yeah, sports, you know. Sports you, commentators. You know, it, Jeez. It's, like a, it's like a bad thing to say that someone has a radio face. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like a TV face, I guess. And I'm not offending Jason anyway but he to me like he has that radio face he does have that iconic that face ico iconic radio face yeah that would leave a mark on you, you yeah know, you exactly would remember. But, but he's like a talk show kind of guy yeah, exactly but like on the radio mm -hmm. he does look like that to me personally I don't know what that even means you know what I mean I don't know what I'm even saying I would <laughs> word it as iconic iconic yeah, <laughs> not radio face probably okay so now we have some theories that we could also discuss and then we could kind of, you know, try to try to talk about what, what we think happened to Jason. So, Jason could have been a victim of a hit-and-run accident. Some people suspect that there is a chance that maybe Jason was hit by a vehicle and then the driver potentially put jason inside of that vehicle to hide the body to avoid any you know possible mm, problems with law enforcement mm -hmm. or like killing jason i don't know this one for me sounds a little odd because if there was ever a hit and run wouldn't that cause commotion a little bit of a loud noise someone a car hitting someone it would cause I don't know. Someone would hear it and someone would see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I agree with you completely. And this is also, I think, the sentiment online. A lot of people have a problem with this hit and run theory because they don't think that it would be so easy to just... Yeah, especially within know. a suburban neighborhood. Yeah, there's houses everywhere. Mm-hmm. So I agree. I, I, I'm ruling this one out. Another one is that maybe Jason was either intending to commit a suicide or run away. So from all accounts, the suicide, obviously, you never know mm -hmm. what's going through a person's mind. But the runaway, I'm ruling out because just, there's just nothing that would indicate a runaway. A suicide, though, on, a, on the other hand, also, I mean, I don't think so. Because to me, it looks like Jason had a very kind of clear-cut plan for the day. Yeah, it seemed pretty you know, regular. He, was, he doesn't look like he had any... I mean, he even he, threw out the trash. He even threw out the trash, did the regular routine. So I, I also don't think that that's yeah. the case. So it leaves us with one possibility, which is that he was abducted by someone potentially someone he knew in within the, the neighborhood within the neighborhood yeah exactly so 
Here's a take on this whole situation by a female colleague of Jason's from the college radio station. She said that Jason wouldn't have gotten into a car with a stranger, and she believes if he was abducted, it would have to be someone that he knew. Mm -hmm. Also, I feel like if someone pointed a gun at him, he would also probably get into the car. Maybe, you know, someone was indeed pointing a gun at Jason because that neighborhood, from what I read on Reddit, is not the best. Northern Omaha, apparently... Not the safest? Yeah, apparently it's not like the safest place in Omaha to be in. And I kind of get that vibe when i looked at google street view images it kind of gave me that mm, you know not the best not the safest vibe in the world Mm -hmm. like it's not really bad but it's also not the best like you could see some you could just see how i don't know maybe i'm maybe i'm crazy but it just looked to me like it wasn't the safest yeah And and i and i can understand that And then, yeah, so as I've said, according to Reddit, not a very good neighborhood. And in 2001, it was even worse. So so it was even apparently worse than it is right now. So maybe now it's okay. Uh, Even now it looked kind of shady. So back in the day, it was even worse probably. Yeah, it's technically north... Omaha, which has a higher concentration of people on the sex offender register, okay? Oh, geez, that's pretty bad. Houses are in pretty poor shape there in general, and it's been that way for decades and has, like, really questionable residents living there. I mean, if the houses are a little bit um, below the standard, it's pretty okay, but the amount of sex offenders in one area... Ooh, that's a huge red flag. Yeah. So in order to kind of, you know, have something more to talk about in this case, I I was trying to dig into this case a little bit. I was trying to find out the crime rate for this northern Omaha, mm-hmm. but I couldn't find this information online. I don't think that's a public information. No, it should be. It should be? Yeah, crime rates are a public, definitely a public, public info for sure. For some reason, couldn't find. I think I found like for Omaha, and from Omaha, it's not that bad as I understand. So I don't know. I couldn't really find that. Next thing I was trying to do, I was trying to like look into the sex offender registry mm-hmm. for Omaha, and there was a link. I think like the sheriff's department or something like that had the link, but then I couldn't really filter out by neighborhoods. So, because I guess my idea would be to kind of, I mean, even if I could filter out, I mean, I would have to go back to 2001 and see who was living there. I don't know if it's even possible. I mean, if someone knows how to like filter out 2001 Northern Omaha sex offenders, then please leave this info in the comment section. Because I would love to look into it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I just couldn't figure out how to filter out. 2001 sex offenders in northern Omaha just couldn't do it so no input there as well so I was kind of trying to get into Jason's mind like why would Jason what like like what could have happened okay like like really try to to try to imagine like the whole situation from Jason's perspective so I was thinking, and I kind of came to this conclusion that maybe, okay, so the first thing that came into my mind, as I remember, I remember thinking that, okay, the whole situation for Jason to even go to work was unexpected. Mm -hmm. So maybe he had already made plans. Maybe he already had plans to do something. Mm Mm-hmm that day and you know his boss called him and he had to drop those plans to go to work but maybe before he went to work he went to meet that person whoever that person was gonna be to kind of do whatever jason would have done 
you know, I'm not saying that he had any plans. I'm just saying theoretically, maybe yeah. he had some plans for the time where he was just because I mean, you're 19 mm -hmm. and you literally have and Jason looked like he was an active person. So I feel like Jason was probably someone who probably had something to do, like a plan for the yeah. day. So he had a plan and, and, and that would make me think that maybe him having to go to work potentially disrupted his plan. Mm -hmm. And so maybe he had to go somewhere, take care of something quickly and then go meet up that female, I don't know, female uh, co-worker for, for, for whatever. And so I was thinking, who is Jason hanging out with? on a regular basis. And I'm thinking, did law enforcement consider this line of thinking? Maybe Jason, because Jason made that walk to high school probably for many years. And so for him to just randomly get abducted this time, I mean, of course it could happen, but I'm kind of thinking he's been living there, as I understand, most of his life. He's, he knows the area. He feels safe there. It's a middle of the day. It's not even night time. It's not even the bad time of the day, day. So I am thinking that to me, the more I think about it, the more I'm leaning towards that he was meeting someone he knew. It wasn't like some random abduction. Mm -hmm. Who would abduct you at 11 a.m. on a Wednesday? It's a, a weird time to get abducted, you know, especially for a 6'1 man, 6'1 grown man. So why, how is that? Why are you even, first of all, why are you even abducting a 6'1 grown man? But maybe he was familiar or he knew someone from, from within the neighborhood who was a sex offender. Okay. And was lured in the house? Yeah, so I'm thinking something like that maybe because law enforcement did look into some sex offenders. Mm -hmm. So, you know, law, law enforcement definitely put more time and effort into thinking through about Jason's case than, than we did and they have like talked to people. Yeah. So they searched through sex offenders' homes. So maybe that's what's happening. Maybe there is someone with a questionable background that mm -hmm. they suspect maybe they even know he did it but just can't prove it you know what's even weirder his car coincidentally was not working that particular day i mean would he be missing would he be okay if only that car was not i don't know fixed Or was fixed, Hammond? That's a good point. The whole thing with his car not working. It's also interesting because, yeah, like, it's it's also a, a, a situation that he's not regularly involved in. What I mean is exactly, that his right? car usually works. Mm -hmm. like, usually you live your life and your car works. Your car doesn't work rarely. So this was another, the, yeah, when the more you think about it, this is like, things could have happened because he was out of his comfort zone. Mm -hmm. He didn't have his, first of all, his plans got disrupted on a very short notice. Mm -hmm. On top of that, he already had very limited mobility to begin with, no car. So he was very like... Out of his comfort zone. Out of his comfort zone completely. So whatever happened to him, happened to him like when he was out of his comfort zone. You meant when he was walking towards yeah, the school. Yeah, he was walking. But I'm, I'm just saying maybe like the general idea is like he's already, you know, not super comfy. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't have his car. Now he has to go to work on a short notice. He potentially has to be there for two, two shifts <laughs> in a row in a fast food joint that's hard work that's mm -hmm. not easy you know what I mean? definitely so it sucks everything already sucks ass can you say that word on youtube maybe you could blur that out I'll, try adding a beep in there okay okay i'll try <laughs> and so so it's already bad everything's bad so i don't know 
So generally thinking, uh, generally thinking, this is where I would like to close off because I don't think we can. Oh, uh, one more you, second. Oh yeah. Of you know what there, this reminds me of? What? The recent happening in Lithuania. You know that little. Oh yeah. There's a. There's a. There is actually a very, very, be- very creepy case. That, Extremely. That just happened in Lithuania, and this this is something that doesn't happen in this country because mm-hmm. things don't, like this don't happen in this country. A nine-year-old girl from my home city, Konas, which is the second biggest city in Lithuania, it has like two hundred and fifty thousand people, so it's it's like a small city. You know what I mean? It's like it's not even as big as Omaha. Oh yeah. And you know this nine-year-old girl, she for some reason was I don't know walking towards a bus station on this very cold night in the winter it was a very cold night I don't know in Fahrenheit but in Celsius it was like minus 20 it was freezing it's like super freezing mm-hmm. it's, it hurts to be outside so she was walking to the bus stop and that's all we know and then she's missing for like two full days and and the whole country is freaking out. The whole Lithuania is freaking out on Facebook. People are posting like, "Have you seen this girl? This and that." And then me, you and me are thinking, "Oh my God, this is it! A girl is missing for two full days. Nine-year-old girl mm-hmm. in freezing weather, minus twenty Celsius. Like, oh my God, you're dead. How are you still alive?" And then these really crazy, kind of disturbing news start coming out how police officers are like going inside of these old like soviet garages like these garage units where people used to keep their cars and i don't know do all kinds of weird stuff like keep pickled pickles or pickled (laughs) maybe just fix the cars fix the cars but then and then they they find a girl with a 43 year old man inside of that garage who had abducted her well he's still a suspect but you know i mean it's very obvious yeah, but he, legally he's still a suspect and if i remember correctly that garage was soundproofed from the inside yeah right? apparently there was some some something happening with the garage the guy had like soundproofed it a little bit he had made like it has a basement. A so basement? The, yeah, so the garage the garage is like the first level mm-hmm. and it has a below level. It has like a little basement there. Oh my god. And there is a ventilation thing happening from the basement to the outside. And it's just so bad. It's just so bad. So we had like a case. I mean the girl was okay. Mm-hmm. She's fine. She's now Last time I heard she was in the hospital, she was allegedly okay. Obviously, law enforcement is going to be protecting her identity from now on, even though her picture was shared everywhere online. But from I think now it on, was. I think the pictures were slowly being taken down, or maybe already were taken down. Yeah, potentially. Uh, that's good. Yeah, you know I mean? really that, good. That's really good. We don't need that that at all mm-hmm. uh, right now, because she is alive and she's gonna have to somehow live her life i don't know how how you move move on from that two days with 43 year old man in one of those soviet garages it gives me goosebumps yeah. actually yeah and so, yeah yeah so it's so really sorry going back to the case kind of reminds me of it like what if something similar happened to him yeah but then what but this is like a 6-1 jason Jel- jelkovsky but the, what if he wasn't taken violently? More like he was lured. Oh, can you help me out with my basketball, my baseball things? You know, a it's, sex offender? Yeah, in his garage. Or like maybe an older individual was like, Oh, hello, young man. Can you help me out? Lift some crates in my backyard, in my basement. And then he was never found again. Yeah, I think I saw something like that also. Like, like how... Maybe he trusted someone mm-hmm. in the neighborhood and went in. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think could be a case. Could be could be a case, but I'm still thinking towards like why now? What do you mean I mean, why now? Why not when he was walking to high school for the last ten years? Why why now? Maybe because he didn't have a car 
and he would usually not walk anymore. Mm-hmm. So the suspect was just waiting for the right time. This was Wednesday. It was summertime, so yeah, probably school is out. So probably not a lot of kids hanging around anymore at eleven. Mm-hmm. Or maybe there are a lot of kids hanging out at eleven because no more school, and it's two thousand and one. Nah, kids. They would wake up at eleven. Oh yeah, true, 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 true. So maybe, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Just to me, it seems like. Why now, when he's a grown man? Why not when he was younger? You know, and six point one—it's not the easiest guy to kind of take advantage of. But then that、uh, maybe disability comes into play.、Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe the disability is in fact severe.、Um, maybe. Maybe, yeah.、Uh, anyways, we could just keep on speculating forever here, but yeah. So your kind of final stamp. What do you think happened? Someone took him. Someone took him. Someone he knew, possibly knew, someone he felt safe with, knowing he's in his hometown. Yeah. In his turf, in his neighborhood, someone there, and something happened to him within that neighborhood. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. I think I think maybe he was actually going to meet someone. You think For so? For some reason, I'm just thinking. Yeah, he was actually gonna. He probably had other plans for the first part of the day. Those plans got altered. But would the time allow it, though? Was there enough time for him to meet someone? Yeah, maybe if it's that 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 person is on the way to high school. And then that person just abducted him. Maybe something got out of hand.、Hmm. You know, I don't know. So we can only speculate. Yeah. So. Hopefully,、uh, we will get some more answers.、Um, for this one, I think we have to close it off here. So,、mm-hmm. thank you for listening, everyone, and、uh, see you very soon. Yeah, stay, sooner. Yeah, stay, we promise. Yeah, stay、mm-hmm. safe, guys. Bye. Bye.